What is going on, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dap Central. My name is Farid, and in today's video, I've got a brief update for you guys surrounding the Jed stablecoin. So over the course of the past few months, the Jed team, again, which is going to be developed and spearheaded by Cody, has officially announced that they would be moving over to Ethereum and also expanding into the BNB network. Now, the BNB network is going to be the Binance Smart Chain. And today we just got an official announcement that they now have a liquidity pool on the BNB chain. So what I want to do as a part of today's video is quickly break down exactly how you can take your jet from Cardano, move it over to the BNB network. And if you want to become a liquidity provider on this new DAP, which is now hosting the jet stablecoin, how you can go ahead and do that. As always, if it's your first time stopping by this channel and you guys want more content like this, do consider hitting that like button and do also consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions surrounding anything I'll be chatting about today, then again, make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. Now, this first article here that I'm sharing with you guys was released in the early portion of May. And there's actually a second article that I also want to touch on here for today's video. As always, I'll leave the links to them down in the description below. But we basically had a deep pegging event which took place surrounding the SVB banking collapse in the um, latter portion of the month of February. Since then, the stablecoin communities have been looking to see exactly what has been stable and the JET stablecoin really was tested and proved itself during that time period. Now, as a result of that, we saw that the JET team announced that they would be bringing and bridging their stablecoin to the ERC networks, which include Ethereum as well as BNB with a partnership with the Chainport Bridge. Again, as a part of my last video, I basically broke this down. But if you guys are not familiar with Chainport, you can access their website by heading over to app.chainport.io. From here, they do now support the Cardano network, so you can quickly connect your wallet, which I've already done. You can then select which network you want to move your tokens from, right? Which right now I've selected Cardano and then where I want those tokens to be ported over to. So keep this in mind that this version of Jet will be a wrapped version. So what this means is that whenever you're grabbing your Jet from Cardano, they're going to be locking that up and then minting or providing you a wrapped version of the equivalent amount that you're looking to bridge over into the new ecosystem. Once you're done doing whatever it is that you want to do in that new ecosystem, you can then unwrap those assets there for unlocking the initial amount of Jed that you locked up on the bridge. So that's how this is going to work. But once you've selected your to and from chains, you can then select your token, which right now we can see that chain port supports Kopi, Jed, Gens, Horde, and the World Mobile Token. Now, we would expect that this list continues to grow, especially as we get more projects building and reaching out of Cardano. So that is going to be how you can actually bridge your tokens over. But let's jump into the latest article here, which was just released two days ago. So the Jed token is now actually going to have a use case in terms of liquidity provision on the BNB chain, again, with a partnership with the Thena application. So it states here, we're happy to share that Jet can now be used on the Thena platform. Again, this is going to be a dApp on BNB. With the introduction of wrapped Jet onto the BNB chain, Thena can now offer Jed slash USDC liquidity pools where users can now deposit both coins and begin to earn an APR for their deposits. If you guys are not familiar with the liquidity providing process, it's where you provide two tokens in order to earn a passive yield. But again, do keep in mind that there are some risks associated with being a liquidity provider. Now, this video is not going to be focusing on that. But if you are not looking to provide liquidity, but more or less leverage or trade between two tokens, you'll now have a liquidity pool on the Thena application, which is going to be a DEX building on BNB in order to be able to do that. So Thena.fi, which we're going to check out here in just a minute, is going to be a native liquidity layer and decentralized exchange or a DEX for short on the BNB chain. They offer token swaps, liquidity pools, yield farming, governance, and NFT staking. So if you guys are familiar with MinSwap, Muesli Swap, Sunday Swap, or Wing Riders, they're basically going to be the equivalent of that on the BNB network. So right below that, we do have a screenshot here showing us how to provide and remove liquidity from their platform, which again, we'll take a look at here in just a moment. But to get started, you'll first have to bridge your JED over to BNB, 
using the chain port bridge. Again, I just touched on that and you can watch their easy to follow video tutorial that they've also got instructing you through that entire process. Now, after connecting your BNB compatible wallet to Thena, you can either swap wrapped jet for other tokens or provide liquidity to the USDC in jet liquidity pool. So let's quickly go ahead and jump over to Thena.fi. And from here, I don't actually have a BNB specific wallet, but if you did, you could connect your wallet. Now, once you do that, you've got the ability to add liquidity or swap directly from this particular liquidity pool. If you're adding liquidity, you'll have to add an equivalent amount of JET and USDC. But if you're swapping, you can swap your JET or USDC for one another. One cool thing that I did want to note here is going to be how much of the tokens are actually locked right now on the BNB network. So we can see that we've got 24,000 of the JET tokens within uh, amount of 44,000 of the USDC tokens. So keep in mind that one JED is supposed to be pegged to a US dollar. So we should have theoretically $68,000 within this liquidity pool. So it's not going to be the biggest liquidity pool there is, but it is a liquidity pool nonetheless. And we now have a little bit of JED on another ecosystem outside of Cardano. Also keep in mind that we're in a bear market and as the platform grows and as we get more users back into DeFi, we should begin to see some of these liquidity pools grow and the interaction and swaps within these liquidity pools as well continue to gain more and more adoption. So we're off to a great start here. And again, keep in mind that this is going to be the first time that Jed has gone cross chain. Now, one thing I want to do is take a look at the Jed TVL which right now is going to be counted for Cardano. And we currently have a total TVL of $11 million for Jed on Cardano. One thing that I did notice on DeFi Llama is that they used to keep track of Jed on the Milk and Meta sidechain, as well as on the BNB networks under a label called the Jed Alliance. However, that option is no longer available and I'm only seeing tracking information for the Cardano network. That said, we did have an all-time high in terms of TVL of $17 million around the April timeline. And since then, we've seen a slight decrease in the actual um, TVL for this particular stablecoin. Jumping over into the next portion here, I do want to quickly touch on the minting and burning mechanisms for Jet and Shen. Given the fact that we now have a collateral ratio below 400%. Now, if you guys are not familiar, depending on the reserves, right, for the Jet stablecoin, which is going to be in the Shen coin, we want to make sure that there's always a collateral ratio of anywhere between 400 and 800%. This basically confirms or makes it so that no matter what happens with the actual price fluctuations of the underlying assets or the underlying collateral, that you can always redeem your jet for $1. And so if we jump over into this next screenshot here, given the fact that the collateral ratio right now is below 400, we do not have the ability to mint additional jet because we don't have enough reserves to actually back that up in the event that there were to be some sort of bank run or that more than enough people want to redeem their jet for the equivalent value of a single dollar. Similarly, if we were to have too much of the Shen reserve token, we would not be able to mint any more Shen given the fact that we have too much collateral in the reserves. Now, you may say that that's not necessarily a bad thing to have too much collateral, but that is going to be the range that it's set up here by the JED protocol. So right now we're in a position where you can't mint any additional JED. You can burn JED if you want to, and you can also mint Shen to therefore increase the collateral ratio um, for the existing amount of JED that is minted. I do have a full dedicated video breaking this, this entire process down, excuse me, if you guys want to find out more about the collateral ratio and when you can mint or uh, burn jet as well as mint or burn shen. The very last thing I want to touch on is going to be the Indigo IUSD token, which is going to be the second stable coin that we currently have on Cardano. So as I mentioned before, we have a TVL of $11 million for jet. However, we have a TVL of $9 million right now for the IUSD token. Again, this is going to be built and provided by the Indigo protocol, which is a synthetics platform building on Cardano, providing users in the Cardano ecosystem with the ability to gain access to assets that may not be native to Cardano. 
So I believe that that is going to be it there, touching on the Jet stablecoin bridging over to the brand new BNB network. And again, it's now going to be available in the Thena DEX, as well as briefly touching on the Indigo protocol and the TVL of the top two stable coins right now building on Cardano. If you guys found today's video to be helpful or insightful in any way, shape, or form, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding anything that we touched on as a part of today's video, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.